some things you picked up on obviously is funding because these private universities have more funds because they charge school fees compared to say the public universities who have to rely on government but as a result of this you know they also as well as public and private universities do post UTME which is another way of making money putting that burden on the students as well and they're saying you cannot go below 120 you cannot go below 100 but you're free to do whatever you want so again the student still suffers as a result of mm. this. And exactly. they're asking, what's the way forward for them? The way forward is simple. Let there be sincerity. Now, if the Minister for Education, if the head of JAMB and so on can get together and see what is the best that we can do for Nigeria, what is the best we can do for our students, I think there will be a lot more progress than we have already. Now, why are the Jews to 120? Why? For 120 is 30%. Where on earth is 30% what you deserve? If you're if you if you employing people, for instance, you, you won't say that if you got 30% of all that we say, anybody in this place you get, then you can come in. No. In that case, we're just employing maybe people who are, not, who are not qualified. So if you don't want people to turn out to be half-baked and so on, then increase cut-off points. Why not just 200? Let 200 stay. If you don't feel satisfied with that, why don't you just scrap jam entirely and let the universities, you know... So is that the solution, to scrap jam? That may not be the solution, but it could be one of the solutions. Another solution could be, for instance, to return to A-levels, all right? The people that made Nigeria what Nigeria is today, all of them, or most of them, would have gone to the polytechnic and so on. Okay, they would have done A-levels and so on. The A-level is actually the bridge between the secondary school and the university. There's no way you can bring the, the brain that you have for a secondary school into the university, you'll be lost. Here are children being introduced to nearly an unkind of unbridled freedom for the first time. So they take that liberty to do whatever they like. And so they flunk their marks and so on. They don't come to school because they think, I'm free. So empower the polytechnics. Let people go to the polytechnics. Let people do A-levels. Improve our vocational colleges and so on. Those are the things that people can do. It is not possible. Neither is it, is it necessary for everybody to go to the university. So, so if everybody can't go to the university, but statistics show that certain parts of Nigeria, say the north, continuously produce very low marks, then are they not being shortchanged? There's no opportunity for you, them. You see, this is where I said I wouldn't like to see the thing as political. The moment we see that a particular segment of the nation is uh, disadvantaged, then we're getting political about it. Now, what can they do? The Yoruba man, the Igbo man, and so on, they were not born with any brain that is superior to anybody else's brain. It is usually environmentally conditioned for your brain to work at a better pace or at a better manner than other brains. So if you know, for instance, as a governor of a state in the north, that your people need something, then do something that can improve their lot. Not for them to bring Don't down Don't bring standards market. down, no. If you're not careful, then there will be a time in the future where employers would now say, for anybody to be employed in this place, let's say in channel television, uh, apart from such skills as communication skills and so on, you need to have maybe, you, you need to have gone to a particular university and then we want to see how much is scored in JAMB. If you are ready for that, let's go with 120. Well, private universities, I mean, they charge school fees. So some of them even admit students that don't necessarily make the cut off marks mm. because they need to keep the universities going. So. What can the government do to curb that, to make sure that we have standards across? Because you just said you don't want a case where, okay, because you went from, to this university, there's a possibility that you just got in anyhow, so we're not really sure whether you even deserve to be in university. That's it. The private universities, um, I don't want to mention any names now, but there is not one private university in Nigeria today that has manpower as, as, um, as well as well-rounded as in any state university. For instance, Lasso. Lasso is better by far. Lagos State University is better by far than any private university in Nigeria. That's not the issue here. The issue here is, if I send my child to this private university, can he acquire as much knowledge as I would be proud of to have paid so much money for? So, if you now send that same child to university abroad for a master's degree, I'm very sure they will still need to, to reintroduce that child to the basics of the course that you thought you had got from. So what they do there is good, yes, to some extent. 
They are good in certain fields, maybe in their medicine, maybe in one other field and so probably, but not in the entirety of what we call university education. And so the manpower you have there, the staff you have there, are not as you have. So they still come to get adjunct staff from the established universities, especially the public ones. So is the post-UTM is still justified if they're still going to allow students to come in anyway? Yes, of course, because many of these students that have JAMB, okay, when they're, when they're taking their JAMB exams, what you find is there are usually some centers which are called maybe magic centers or magic you know, centers. something like that. Magic centers, how do like they that. work? They just go there, you know, you don't need to do much, just fill in your, in, your, just fill in your information and so on about yourself and maybe they give you the answers, you copy the answers and, go, and so on. But they are invigilators and... Yeah, those invigilators are usually bribed and so on. You find them, you, you find students going to a particular special centers. This is... is so you're saying that any result, jam result that comes from these magic centers should be questioned. So doesn't this but also... But do we know those magic centers? But doesn't this question even like jam, the integrity of jam, and maybe, as you said, one of the solutions might be to scrap it? I have not suggested to scrap you said that yeah. might be one of the one solutions. Of the solutions. But if yes. you're saying that there are some centers that write jam and yes. students get answers, yes. then why would we say that body is still it's full porous. of integrity? The jam exam is not a foolproof thing. There are some porous elements there, here and there. So what I'm saying here is those centers are not foolproof. Okay? We have people who are able to see through or to go through those systems and then they're able to get marks that they don't deserve. So. What happens then is, if you're coming to LASU, if you're coming to Unilag, or coming to UI, you have got 350 over 400, no problem. Let us now see you put that 350 into an actual test. So come and do our own exam. Then we now see that, yes, the 350 was actually your own effort. So you come in. But now can, that you can, get the amount that is being charged by this university, surely can it not be reduced if it's just basically a verification? Well, I think government says you cannot exercise. charge more than 2,000, which is okay. Two thousand well, is just for I mean, if, if, if 2,000 people write a post-UTME and there yes. are only spaces for 200, hypothetically, that's money-making for the university. That goes back to what I said earlier. Why must everybody come to the university? Why can't we say, okay, deep, deep, you know, by secondary school, you should know what a child is gifted at. You should know that this child will be good at this kind of thing. So you don't need to go to the university if, for instance, your life can be made very well by going to the polytechnic or going to a college of education or going to a vocational institution. But will these organizations employ you? Would they not discriminate if you have an ND? Which goes back to government. Government needs to let us know that it doesn't matter where you go, so long as what you do is related to how the nation, how the nation can be, I mean, can grow very well, can develop very well, and why not? Okay. We're going to go on a break, but when we return, we'll still have Professor Leke Fakoya stay with us.